Hi, it's Sam from Folk of All Trades here. Welcome to our kitchen on beautiful Ghana country. Uh, we're going to be talking about sourdough bread making today and I want to pay my respects to Ghana and Aboriginal peoples across Australia who are the first bread bakers. So not enough Australians know this. Uh, we should be really, really proud that we've had people baking in this country for thousands of years before the Egyptians who everyone else in the world seems to think are the first bakers. So paying respects to the first bakers, Aboriginal Australians. We're going to be talking about making sourdough and I've got a pre-recorded video coming up so I've been able to condense a whole baking session into one short video. So there's an associated recipe with this and I'm just going to go through that whole recipe so you can follow the steps and, and see the technique um, but also download that recipe so you can make it as well. Straight after this video we're going to be doing a live Q&A um, and basically in that I'm going to be talking about how to actually make a sourdough starter or obtain one, uh, go through some other equipment as well um, and answer any questions or you know troubleshooting that you might have. So a big thanks to Resilient South for supporting this video and this series. So that's the cities of Onkaparinga, Holdfast Bay, Marion and Mitcham. Uh, I'd love for you to join us. Uh, please write down your questions and we'll try and help you become excellent bakers. So it's the morning of the baking day uh, and I've had my starter here resting for 12 hours just out on the bench. 250 grams of starter and so now's the time to add my ingredients. So I've got my tepid water here, you know, not, not hot, not cold, just sort of low 20 degrees. Um, I've just warmed it up in the microwave, so 600 mils of water here, just any old water is fine. And I've also got uh, 750 grams of white flour. Um, so this is just baker's flour. Uh, ordinarily I'd be using a bit more spelt, rye, uh, whole wheat, but I think most people will have uh, access to white flour and it is a little bit more forgiving. So um, let's use that for today and you can just substitute it out if you want to change the recipe to have a bit more specialty flours. So I'm just going to mix these together. This process is called auto lees or autolyze, the French word. So I'm just going to put my water in first, just so that hydrates the starter really nicely. And then I'm going to be adding my flour. So you can add it all in at once, because we're going to be mixing it pretty thoroughly. So I like to, to do a bit of a stir with my, my trusty wooden spoon and just rotate the bowl a bit, just so I'm getting all of those dry bits incorporated. And we're not trying to do any strong kneading technique or anything like that. We're just really trying to make sure all of the flour is wet and incorporated and that sourdough starter that we've got in there is being mixed through nice and evenly. So depending on, on how old your flour is, the relative humidity in your room, you might need more or less water. I tend to just add what I've got, like according to the recipe, and then I can add a little bit more water later if I think it needs it. So it's starting to come together now. As you can see, it doesn't take very long. I'm going to try and get all those little dry bits just because they end up sticking to the bowl and causing a bit of a mess later. So that's looking pretty good. What I'm really paying attention to is how sticky it is and I want it to be really sticky. I want it to stick to my finger. So if you can imagine my hands were doing this, it would be making quite a mess. So that is ready to go. I'm just going to leave that now to sit here on the bench covered with my trusty beeswax shower cap, but you could use a tea towel at this point. So this has been resting for about an hour now and it's time to add our salt. Uh, so it really doesn't matter what kind of salt you use. The recipe calls for three teaspoons or 17 grams. So if you've got a really, really fine salt, then it's gonna be less in terms of teaspoons. And if you've got a really coarse, big flake salt, then it's gonna take up more room, so it'll be more. So maybe the first couple of times you do it, uh, measure out by weight, 17 grams. I know with this salt that it's it's level teaspoons for the ones that I've got. 
So any old salt will do. This is just a, a sea salt. Uh, I really like that, um, that River Murray salt. If you can get your hands on that, that's excellent. And you can also get it from bulk food stores. So just incorporating a bit of those two teaspoons just so it's nicely mixed through. And then I'm going to add my last teaspoon on this side. So just trying to spread it out so I don't get any real salty patches. And then you can already tell the gluten strands have really started to develop even without kneading or, or doing anything at all, just that time spent resting. So that's about enough incorporation and we can take our spoon away now. It's still quite sticky but not too, not too bad and we'll leave that to rest for half an hour. So this has been resting for half an hour now since salting and it's time to do our first fold as part of our proving. So it's a good idea to wet your hands so the dough doesn't stick and then just gathering it up and stretching and folding it over and then rotating 90 degrees. So we're not trying to break the dough, we're just trying to pull it all together. If there's any stuck on the inside of the bowl you can do a little bit of scraping and then just gently stretching it out only as far as it wants to go and repeating the process between six and eight times. I never usually count. If your hands start to stick a little bit, then you can re-wet them. Uh, so we might do one more. And what we're doing here is just encouraging those gluten strands to form and improving the structure of our bread, but also using time. So that's good to go. So this has been resting for another half an hour and it's time to do our second fold. So again, wetting the hands and you'll notice when you come to this stage, it's really holding together quite well at this point and isn't really sticking that much. That's because that gluten has formed even more and it's actually starting to get a bit of volume, getting nice and bubbly and holding together. So even though it might feel really sticky and hard to work with at the beginning, just know that time and this stretching technique will help bring it together for you. So that's that stage really quick and time for another rest. So now's the time to do our pre-shaping or first shaping. So first put a little bit of water down on the bench just so it doesn't stick and having that little bit of water on your hand also helps it not stick to it and try and get as much of the dough out of the bowl as you possibly can first of all you don't want that going down the sink and clogging things up but it also sets like concrete so just saving a little bit there on cleanup later and then I've got a bench scraper here and um, if you've got a bench scraper that's great otherwise you could use um, a butter knife just to divide the loaf I'm going to make two small loaves out of this. If you wanted to, you could make one large one. And then using that scraper or a butter knife, just kind of roughly bringing the loaves together. And if you find things are sticking to you, you can just add a little bit of water to your hand and to the, the scraper. This is like a non-stick hand. So just bringing things together. We're not trying to squish too much or handle it more than we need to, just to sort of roughly bring them together into two little balls and then we're going to let that rest for about 10 or 15 minutes and then it's going to be even easier to handle. So the loaves have been relaxing, uh, the gluten has, has relaxed and stretched out so they'll be much easier to handle now. So we need to prepare our, our holding receptacles. So I've got these, um, these proving baskets or banneton as they're sometimes called and these need to be floured. Alternatively you can use uh, a sieve you know, or a colander and just line, line that with tea towel and also give it a really good dusting with flour but because I've got these banneton I'm going to use those. So just scooping a little bit of flour into a sieve is a really good way to dust the inside and I tend to do that just over the top of the loaf just in case I drop any it goes onto, onto the loaf because I also want a little bit on top of them. So be pretty generous 
if there's any extra flour on top of the loaf, you can always just tap it off afterwards. So I'm just doing a very, very light dusting on what is going to be the top of the loaves. So that's going to make it a little bit easier to handle them. And if you come in, Danny, I'll just get, I'll just show you, because everything has to move pretty fast so it doesn't stick to my hands. Everything is dry at the moment. We've got um, dry hands and, and no water. So I'm going to flip that upside down and then just stretching it out a little bit. I tend to stretch it out this way and fold it in thirds. And then again, the bench scraper really good for having a non-stick and then just folding it over towards myself and putting a bit of tension on the loaf. So then I'm using my hands to scrape underneath and then turning and scraping underneath. So it's really this kind of movement towards myself and on the dry bench it actually helps pull it nice and taut and you might be able to see that that skin there is actually getting really nice and tight. So I do that until it's forming a nice shape and if there are any bubbles that sort of pop up then I just sort of flatten them out and then again this is the top of the loaf I'm going to turn it upside down into my proving basket. So I'll just show you that again can be a little bit tricky to see. Because I'm making a round loaf, I'm doing this very particular kind of, of shaping, but you can do lots and lots of different kinds of shaping depending on the, the style of bread that you want to make. So folding it in thirds and then bringing it over towards myself. And then I often do this quite fast because then it makes it even less likely it's going to stick to you. There are other techniques where you can just sort of do this kind of scissor and turn you know find whatever works for you but we really want to put that nice tension on top of the loaf and then again scraping underneath it and chucking it into our proving baskets so those are ready now to do their final proof uh, for about an hour before they go into the oven so i'm just going to cover them with this this dusted dusted fabric so we're finally ready to bake I turned on the oven about 15, 20 minutes ago and it's now at 250 degrees Celsius. So what I'm gonna do is pull out my hot oven tray, put it down here, quickly tip the, the loaves onto the top and slash them with a knife. It's all gonna happen pretty quickly because as soon as I've tipped, uh, I wanna get those loaves in the oven as quickly as possible so that then they can continue to rise rather than slowly deflating. So I'll do it very, very quickly. One's going on. And then scoring them with a bread knife. I'm just doing three slashes, really simple. And then back they go. So I'm putting them on the top shelf because I really want them to be as hot as possible and spraying some water in as well. We'll leave it like that for 10 minutes and then I'll rotate them and turn the oven down. So the bread's been in the oven for about half an hour, 40 minutes at this point and I just need to check if it's ready. So let's pull it out. So it's got some good colour on it. It's really hard to tell just by looking at it if it's ready. So what I always do is tap it on the bottom and it should sound hollow like a drum. So now it's ready and I'm just going to pop it on this cooling rack and it's still cooking, it's still curing. It's really important that you don't cut into it straight away because you'll ruin the texture. You need to leave it sitting there for at least half an hour, uh, up to 45 minutes before you cut it. So no matter what anyone in the house says, don't cut it open yet. So that concludes the pre-recorded part of the bread workshop. Uh, Head on over to our Facebook page now where I'm going to be talking about more of the processes, the equipment and some of the techniques I've used as well as answering people's questions. So head on over there now.